Gerrymandering is uh, an approach where you cut uh, and uh, design a constituency or various constituencies to ensure a particular party wins the elections. Is that be fair? About. Okay. So, for example, now, uh, Kappa has got, I think, right now, 125,000 voters, whereas Parangrangas has less than 25,000 voters and Putrajaya has maybe less than 5 8,000 voters. So uh, this tells you uh, how uh, lopsided it is. Uh, and it's worse still in Sabah where it's 5,000, 4,000, 8,000 and so on and so forth. Um, anyway, coming back to Klein. Klein uh, in 2008, there, was about, there were about 77,000 voters. Right? So we took a, a sample, size, sample size of 6,000, and of the 6,000 voters, 3,000 voters, about 3,000 over voters, their names uh, and the information are presently missing from the SPR database. So these are people who voted, by the way. People who voted are people's names who was in the list uh, and presumably voted. Their names are missing. Then there are about another 2,000 over voters who voted in Klein in 2008. Today their names are missing from Klein, but you will find them in 184 other constituencies in Malaysia, Peninsular Malaysia, including Sabah and South. Uh, and the large distribution went to uh, Kapa, Kota Raja, Shah Alam, uh, Slango, and so on and so forth. <laughs> so I, I wonder what the design here is. But at the same time, they are also very smart. Person is very smart. They have identified, especially Amno has identified which seats they want to win and win badly. So for them, Portland is quite important. So just last year alone, that means in 2011 alone, there were about new voters, 10,000 new voters in Portland. Because it's a PKR seat. So they won that seat back. It was a, it's an Amno seat previously, taken over PKR. Uh, and now they want to see it back. So they have pumped in last year alone 10,000 new voters, and we haven't forgotten that this is the second quarter, uh, which they, which we will see another increase of 3,000, and then we have 2009 and 2010. But the big increase took place in 2011. Uh, now, if you know what line, there are some places that are stagnant and cannot expand, but there are some places that can expand. So Bukit Tinggi, okay, you see you Bukit Tinggi 1, you Bukit Tinggi 2, you have Mandar Botanic, you have Amman Botanic, you have Parklands. Uh, so these are all expanding new growth areas. So people are moving in. So you, you can explain okay, why the numbers are increasing in those areas. But when you see in Kampong Idama, where you can't build an extra house anymore, suddenly numbers increasing there. So suddenly in a house where there already existed 30 voters, now there's an extra 15 voters on top of that. Uh, and that's not only one house. You have a number of those houses uh, where you have the sudden increase, surge, I should say, of these unidentified new voters. Okay? Then, in Panama, this is a classic case where that, um, that row is actually a uh, shop, shop lot. And it's, for all internal purposes, is 190% Chinese. Though. The entire place. Though. Okay? But you have in that particular address, 994 Jalan Papan, 994 Jalan Papan, you have the address, uh, you have 60 names, and there are only two Chinese names and 58 Malay names. <laughs> it's amazing, huh, what they're doing. What they're also doing is this. For example, like maybe, maybe in Supute. Supute, they know they can't win the seat in Supute. So what they're doing is, they're moving Supute voters, especially if you're an MCA member. Right? So MCA says, hey, we want to win Panamaran. Panamaran is an MCA seat. So they move the MCA voters from Sakute to Panamaran. 
and then they move the Amno voters to where else that Amno has to win elsewhere. So this is the kind of uh, manipulative strategies that the government is, I think, presently undertaking in order to win. Uh, at least in Klang, we get, we've done some work to have a sense of how things are moving, so we get a sense of the game that is being played out. So the only re uh, uh, response to that would be for, from our side that our supporters must turn out, 100% of our supporters must turn out to vote in order to neutralize the group that will be brought into vote. That's the only way it's going to happen. Otherwise, the elections are going to be stolen by Malaysia. This will be the unfortunate state of affairs. Uh, and I think people, a lot of people are getting angry uh, because they think that it's going to be stolen in front of them. And I think they will resist and they will fight back. Now, that is the state of uh, daily mandrake for Slango. And Slango government has undertaken an exercise right now because I think Slango has recorded something like 340,000 new voters. 450,000 new voters. Like I think in Subang is 30,000 new voters. 31,000 new voters. It's some 35,000 new voters. It's just amazing numbers that come in. So they've undertaken a study now where the PBTs are going to all the different houses to verify indeed that these are the new names in those houses. Uh, so that's happening right now to verify that uh, these are really true voters and not phantom voters or voters that have been brought from elsewhere and parked. So these are some of the things that are happening. But I think on our part we have to be vigilant. We have to get all of our supporters uh, to come out and vote to make sure that the elections are not... Safe.